I have not yet had the chance to personally meet Patty Smith, but I already kind of feel like I know her. Uh, because anytime like I've heard her name brought up to anyone, it's, oh, I love Patty. Uh, we, we, uh, my, my student Brandon was going to tell his story, we were on the radio, and um, Lucy Ann Lance said, oh, I love Patty, she's a, she, she's a local celebrity now, so she's a big, big hearted and passionate teacher, author, local celebrity, and storyteller known for her humor and character. Patty wrote a young adult book based on the students she taught in Detroit public schools. She hopes it gets published so that students in poverty, in foster care, or with disabilities can find a voice in the characters. Patty will tell us about her first school in Detroit and a coach who didn't believe in Patty's special education students until something happened that even a lifetime movie couldn't make it up. Her story is entitled, Coach Smith Needs a Movie. Give it up. You know, we don't want y'all here. You know, we don't want you here. Were the first words spoken to me by my first principal at my first job in Detroit Public Schools. We don't want your class here. There were a lot of things I didn't know as I stood in front of the principal. I didn't know that my classroom for visually impaired and blind students was going to be the first classroom of its kind at the school. I didn't know it was actually the first special ed classroom ever at that school. And I didn't know that the parents of the kids at that school, rumored at the behest of the principal, went to the Board of Ed every spring and said, we won't accept special ed at our school. And that's why she said, no, we don't want you here. And then she said, do you know how betrayed my parents, these parents, my parents, are going to feel when they see your kids coming up the hallway? And now something in me kind of triggered, and all I can think of is the key. You know, people who are visually impaired, they have a kid, they're white with red. And I said, well, are they going to be betrayed by the cane? Is that going to bother them, the white and the red? And the principal looked at me and said, they're just blind? And I said, well, you know, some are, most are low vision, but yeah, a few are blind. She kind of rocked back on her heels and said, yeah, they might not be so bad. And then she walked away. And I didn't know that every single poor subject teacher would refuse to take my kids in their class. I'm only certified to teach visual and BI, visual impairment stuff, right? They should be in middle school science, and middle school English, and middle school history, and middle school math. And I went to 12 teachers, four subjects, three grade levels. All 12 teachers said, no, we don't teach special ed. I don't teach special ed. We don't do special ed here. How do I teach blind students? Why do I teach blind students? I didn't go to school to teach special ed. Why are you here? Why are they here? Isn't there a special school for them to go to? And they all said no. So now I'm panicking. It's the last day before the long Labor Day weekend. And I called my supervisor, Lisa, and I said, Lisa, what am I going to do? And she said, I thought this might happen, Patty. But uh, that's information I couldn't use, OK? Uh, she said, but you know what? You're smart. You teach them. No books, no curriculum. But she's like, you're smart. You're I, I said, OK, I'll, I'll do that. And she's but make friends with our music and gym teachers. Send the kids out for electives. So I scurry scurried and I made friends with our music teachers, lovely ladies. To their credit, they said, we'll send the kids down any hour. Then it was time to meet Coach Smith, the subject of this story, and the gym teacher. And my assistant, Mr. Peebles, is like, he was a coach. He's like, I want to meet this guy. Okay, so we go to the other side of the school, the gym, the office, off the gym. And there's a man sitting there writing, and he looks up and sees us. And he says, no, 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 no. Your kids ain't coming in my gym. And before we could say a word, Coach Smith stood up and said, and not only do I not want to see them in my gym, I don't want to see them on my side of the school. And my assistant kind of went and I said, you know, you know what, it's the end of the day, let's just go. And we went, we came back that Tuesday day after Labor Day and the kids showed up. And my kids were amazing. 
They were outstanding. I could not have asked for a better class. Detroit Public School kids are phenomenal. They are the most resilient, amazing kids. If you don't know them, you should. They go through things that grown folks like us would be in the corner quivering like a ball of gel. I would. And they go through that every damn day. And they show up in sandals when it's snowing. And they show up with no coat and no paper and no nothing and no food. And they show up. And those kids were amazing. And we had a kick ass year. But I'm not bragging myself. Just know that we raised our grades and reading and math and everything. And just know that and grace it. It's pretty time to wait. I mean, went to art and music classes. And the other teachers in the school kind of got used to seeing them. And then uh, they kind of got used to it. Everyone kind of just, eh, okay, it is. Except Coach Smith. It was like we were a personal affront to him. He put my middle schoolers in lunch with the kindergartners because that's where he thought their brains were. Because they couldn't see too good, he thought they belonged eating with the kindergartners. I had to stop that. He wanted me to hold their hands in the hallways. Had to stop that. When he heard about the beep scores, he said, these kids are ruining my school. And when I heard him say that my kids were ruining his school, something in me switched. I'd been there a minute now. It was like spring when he said this. And I'm pretty professional, Trish Smith, Dr. Smith, whatever. But in me lives the West Side Cat. West Side Cat is not so professional. She came out that morning. And I, I got up in his face and I said, all right, buddy. But West Side Cat doesn't say buddy, she says asshole. So I think that's what I actually said. What's Side Cat said. And I said, I don't know. What's that kid you're living in? You've got to come correct. You've got to get with it. Special. And I, uh, I made my point, and we avoided each other the rest of the year. Um, school year ended, new school year started. Most important thing that happened, two things. Principal, retired. Uh, <laughs> and we got a student named Randy. Okay, Randy was a sixth grader. Got to know a few things about Randy. Not born visually impaired. He got tuberculosis when he was eight. Went to his optic nerve. Not totally blind. If he knew you, he could tell who you were. Ladies loved him. There was always a young lady escorting him down the hall. He could get down the hall better than you and me, but whatever. And Randy, he learned Braille in a year. Okay, most 90% of blind people don't learn Braille. No, in fact, he learned it in a year. Top of his class, smart kid. Loved sports. His dad, his brother, and him, he knew the plays, he knew the players. He loved sports. So he came to me that first week of school and said, Ms. Smith, I love my music class. And I said, that's great. And he said, but what about gym? When do I get gym with Coach Smith? And I looked at my assistant, and we got that feeling that grown folks get when you're gonna up, when you're gonna break a kid's heart. And I'm stammering, oh, I don't know Randy, maybe next year, I don't know. And he's like, no, that's cool, Ms. Smith, it's okay. As long as I'm not on the basketball team, I'm straight. <laughs> but then I started thinking. I started thinking about football, and I'm like, I'm gonna punt. And I said, you know, Randy, every day I talk to Coach Smith. Maybe work that out. Okay. Next week is open house, 8 o'clock at night. I'm getting ready to go home. I look up in my doorway is outlined Coach Smith, backlit by the hallway soft yellow light. And he starts walking in my classroom and he says, so, I hear one of your kids wants to be on my basketball team. And I just waited and I waited for the crap to start and I just waited. And he said, yeah, I guess I'll make him the equipment coach, and he can like have a uniform, travel with the team, help me with the equipment, and I'm like, what? And I'm like, I thought you didn't want to see him on your side of the building. So that was the Westside Caddy. I didn't even say that. I'm sorry. That's my bad. And uh, Coach Smith said, yeah, <clears throat> you know, and he starts, his face turned red, and he starts stammering, oh, I didn't know special ed, never had special ed, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, it's cool. This is great. This is going to be great. Thank you. Next day, Randy comes in, Mr. Peoples, Ms. Smith, guess what? I'm the assistant coach of the basketball team. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I'm going to be on the floor with Coach Smith, co-manager, coaching, calling the plays. And he started doing that little, like, to the left, to the left thing that was like a thing back then. And I'm like, oh, Randy, that's great. And I'm, I'm hugging him and I'm telling him, Randy, you're going to be the best coach ever. But in my head, I'm really a cynical, horrible person. And I'm thinking, this is crap. Randy's going to be sitting, because that's what happens to our special ed kids. We include them, we let them in, but they sit, because no one wants to bother with them or teach them. And that's what I'm thinking as I'm hugging him. 
And I told him he was going to swag it out. And he's like, no, you're still not using that word right, Miss Smith. Go keep practicing. Sorry. So, you know, time is passing. And I'm hearing about, okay, the first game, first basketball game, the boys went out there, stunk up the place the first half. <laughs> Halftime, Randy calls him over, talks to him. They go out and they win. Oh, my God. Crappy first half, halftime Randy comes over, they go out and they win. Yeah. And they're winning. And they're going to Randy. And Randy's not sitting on the bench. Randy's on the floor with the coach. Randy is coaching. He's screaming. He's yelling. He's hopping up and down. The boys are looking at him as their coach, and they're winning. And winning and winning, and they go undefeated. Randy makes the team. That would have been the end of the life. But no, we were undefeated. So going to the championship game. So the day before, I'm like, I gotta see my man. So I went to uh, Coach Smith the day before the championship game, and I said, So uh, you and my student are going to the championship. And he said, Miss Smith, I, I didn't know, I didn't know what they could do. You know, and, I, and I'm like, it came a long way, you know, from not in my gym to this. And he said, I've taught here my whole career. We've never had special ed. I didn't know. I didn't know. I said, no. But you know what you're going to get? Now we have to worry. Because now he's like, oh my God, what's crazy, ladies? What's like panic? What was winning? And I said, you're going to get a movie. He's like, what? And I said, a movie. Coach Smith sees the light. From not in my gym to the championship. Yeah. 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 And I said, so you start thinking, who's going to play you? Because clearly Sarah Silverman plays me. <laughs> And I said, you start thinking, coach. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I said, well, good luck tomorrow. And I'm walking out, and I hear him say, Denzel. <coughs> I'm like, what? He goes, Denzel Washington's going to play me. And I'm like, yeah, of course, middle-aged man. Looks nothing like Denzel. Yes, my first, yes, exactly. So next day, I'm in the room waiting for news of the championship. My door flies open, and there's sweaty, stanky teenage boys in their uniforms jumping up and down. In the center is Randy holding this huge trophy. And he says, Mr. Peoples, Miss Smith, we won. And we're all jumping in this circle. And then Randy holds up the trophy and goes, guess what? I'm an MVP. <laughs> and he's like, the coach said it was unanimous. Every boy in that team wanted to give that to Randy. So I'm like, movie. <laughs> and then the boys are like jumping out, you know how when they move on. Um, and uh, that was the end of the season, and that was the end of the school year. And someone talked to someone downtown, and they closed our special ed room and moved us to another K through eight school. Ended up being the best years of my teaching career, so it was great. I didn't keep in touch with anyone at that old school, but Randy did. Randy coached for two more years. Never quite had the, you know. Lifetime movie that you know, but um, he went back and he coached. And Coach Smith never got his movie, but now he's got a story. Thank you very much.